Hi, everyone. I spent 12 hours playing Warhammer 40,000 10th edition yesterday. In that period of time, I feel like I learned a lot. Uh, it was a doozy. For people who are here to extract information pertaining to orcs and get some hot takes on lists, I will go over that now. And then I will go further in depth on some general thoughts of the edition and how I feel about the future of the game as a whole. Uh, spoiler, it's bleak. But uh, without any further ado, let's go over this uh, list. This is the third list that I arrived at. It's definitely rough. There's a lot of things that could be better here, but I think it's the kind of direction that orcs from a competitive standpoint should probably optimally go in. So we start off with 40 boys, uh, novel for power claw in each, 10 man squads, three squads of 10 grots. I really like their uh, new CP regen mechanic. Orcs need a lot of CP. Our stratagems are very good and we don't have that many other ways to get command points or I don't think there's any ways to get stratagems for free really either. Unless I've missed something. Thing. But I, I don't remember seeing anything to get like the juicy ones for free. So Grotz are a nice little extra CP mechanic. There are five trucks total in this list. They're uh just, yeah, three listed here and then two down below just because I was making this on my phone and didn't want to organize it. Two units of five Storm Boys, uh, Novel for Power Claw on each. Uh, I do feel like the Novel for the Power Claw, it's interesting that like you're like, oh, free Power Claw, like who wouldn't want that? But I feel like it's kind of a trap sometimes in that a lot of models have the ability to get negative one to hit. And in ninth edition, Power Claws had minus one to hit. Now they are weapon skill four. So, I mean, this is true for like Power Thist and Thunder Hammers or whatever too. It's it's like a, like a widespread problem. Um, and uh, because they're starting at weapon skill four, they can still be modified. They're not weapon skill three modified to be a four. So if your opponent is minus one, two hit, now you're hitting them on fives. So like armies like custodes that have an army wide minus one, two hit that they can keep on the whole game and probably will if your opponent is good. It, uh, it's pretty brutal having to hit on fives. And uh, like well, war boss can give a plus one, right? There's ways to get around this, but on squads without characters, which is mostly what I'm wondering, I feel like the power cloak can sometimes be a double edged sword, but... Uh, for other matchups and in general, I think it's like worth having them as a whole, but something to bear in mind when you're building your list. We've got Zagstruck uh, with the 10 man Storm Boys. I liked him, but I feel like he provides utility that might not be that necessary. I'm debating cutting him long term. Uh, I think he's good at what his job is. I just don't think I need any more units that do that job. Two units of War Bikes, three mans, Knob with a Power Claw, 10 Knobs with Power Claws, a truck. Uh, the war boss goes with the knobs for 70 points, giving them minus one to wound and a beat stick character that gets nine attacks and wog with a pretty impressive melee profile is sick. War boss and knobs are great together. I would consider getting a second unit in a truck and might drop the 10 man storm boys down to a five man and rearrange some stuff to uh, get that. A couple units of two mega knobs. Fun fact, uh, the mega knobs and taken in two man squads are actually cheaper than taking them in three or six mans. As you can see here, uh, six man is 200 points and a three man is 100 uh, versus uh, the two man mega knobs are 65, not 70. So two and five are the most efficient price points for mega knobs. You are saving five points if you take them in that squad size, which is like, I mean, who cares? right? It's like a pretty nominal amount of points, but it's very funny to me that that's the case. And then finally we have Gaz and six Mega Naps. So the way this works is uh, every, it's very easy to see like uh, Mazarog or whatever and Squidcog boys and their damage output in isolation and just be like, wow, that's like so good. Like what a sick profile. And like, yeah, that's true. If your opponent isn't uh, three Wraith Knights that can always see you no matter what you do, because towering is a thing now. If you play casually or you're just playing a few friends, you can run like literally whatever you want. I think there's a lot of like fun data sheets in here. But if if you're trying to play against like indirect fire hell and i think like what are going to become like a lot of the meta staples for a while like this is much more the direction i would take forks uh, like a lot of armies have ways to do uh insane amounts of damage output orcs are not one of those we have like a reasonable amount of damage output i think it would be very high if it wasn't for like unintentional synergies in the first game i played i played against my friend eddie and he had a wraith knight do 35 mortal wounds to gaz and his mega knob retinue through use of strands of Fate and their ability to get devastating wins on sixes and i think that is not above average i think a good eldar player or like not even a good like just anyone who plays eldar uh eddie is a good eldar player but i think like anyone can do this like we'll just like be able to do that with strands of fate pretty brain dead every game and it's very difficult to hide from them unless you are using ruins that have entirely blocked off walls with no windows which is not how terrain is standardized now i think like ignoring windows is going to be a hot fix that people use for a while but i didn't want to play with that assumption because i want to play like as if this was literally a tournament in 10th today to see how it felt and uh yeah it's a conclusion i came to i think what orcs are really good at is that we can have an insane number of units and one thing that i feel like i haven't seen people talk about enough yet is the removal of the force organization chart it means you can take way more units than you could
good previously. Like orcs, for instance, have always uh, throughout ninth like struggled to have room for fast attack units. And uh, we had a lot of really good fast attack choices that were always competing for space, like three men, squig hogs and storm boys and the buggies. And now you can just take like whatever you want. So uh, my direction moving forward is going to uh, take this. And I think this is like a fun version of the list that's like reasonable, but if I really wanted to go all the way, uh, I think just like more boys and trucks and they're not their job is not to charge people and kill them Their job is to have an insane threat range for uh, contesting objectives the ability to Move the truck and then disembark them and then have them just like not not a charge even but just like advance on to a point Sit there and deny your opponent primary is like very very good The thing with like the Wraith Knight build and like a lot of other stuff is like there's a lot of like really powerful shooting But most of it doesn't have ways to necessarily Necessarily effectively kill like a ton of units okay. like oaths of moment right it's reroll all hits and wounds against a single target if you have like 40 units in your army i think this is something like gsc could excel like super super well at uh that gets pretty difficult for them to deal with and uh, not losing models to battle shock anymore is pretty cool too i mean granted yeah like if they just bring all your units down to half and you fail battle shock that sucks but the one cp strat to auto pass morale not being limited to once per game anymore that's like super handy too so as long as you have one cp you can guarantee at least like one objective with a battle shock a unit on it can still be yours and you get to spend the cp after you've tested for a battle shock so you can wait to see like where is most important for you and then like just roll in order starting with the objectives that you need the most if a unit is battle shocked and the objective you really really need you just pop it there uh things to consider changing gaz is the best part of his six man mega knob unit the six mega knobs are fine but they're mostly just like a shield for him and like a little bit of extra damage to help if he can't quite kill something so uh i can see he's taking a additional two man mega knob squad instead of the six man and gaz and it gives him a smaller footprint to be able to hide with too hiding six mega knobs gaz and Akari is kind of a tall feat against towering and I can see having a smaller footprint working out. Um, Makari's lethal hit ability, he has a 12 inch aura of lethal hits for friendly orc models during WOG. Um, that was super useful. It lets this whole army punch way above its weight class. And uh, if you're able to coordinate your boys in a good way and sink your teeth into a really juicy unit in the middle, you could like uh, pretty easily, if you're careful enough, like kill a Wraith Knight with Makari and Gaz and like just a bunch of boys swarming them. Just through a combination of unbridled carnage, the lethal hits, yeah, just like sheer volume of attacks. But uh, yeah, the reason why MSU was good is because it allows you to do most of the secondaries pretty easily. I would never take fixed secondary areas with this list or for a lot of lists unless your plan is just i think fixed ones are good if your plan is to just table your opponent max engage and then like whatever other thing that your army can do i uh played a lot of just like uh, objective denial armies in eighth and ninth edition and this feels like the best thing at this current moment in time uh, it cycled right like during freebooters playing the objective at all was a weakness uh, i had grots on my list initially my list was much stronger when i dropped them in exchange for more buggies and shooting but i don't think orcs can really keep up with the shooting meta i think they lose the arms race and what's better is to sidestep and then just go purely into mission play for now i feel like in warhammer in general uh and they always want you to bring like balanced factions that are like a mix of stuff but it's typically not what works out in reality uh, historically it has, but I feel like what happens a lot of the time is there's just like a spike where some armies can do something insanely efficiently and no one can really stop them. Uh, like Drukhari were insanely good at the mission in ninth when they first came out. Uh, it was very hard for armies to just stop them to nine points. Dark Angels, the same thing to a lesser extent. Orcs with good bits were really good at this too towards the end of ninth in a way that I didn't really see that many people take advantage of outside of like a few heroes playing Death Skulls and scoring a hundreds consistently for every game in a major. Uh, shout out to Matt Root. But um, yeah, I don't, uh, I, I think like we're just back to being full objective game. I like Gaz and the six Mega Knobs because they're a really great target for the fight on death stratagem into Custodes, who I think are going to be a pretty common matchup. Their book is very, very strong. I think stronger than a lot of people realize now. And I uh, feel confident that there will be spicy tech explored for them long term. Blade Champions feel good. Guardians feel good. Uh, Loris Terminators feel good. There's a lot of like stuff in there. I think they can also play the MSU game relatively well. They'll obviously less though because they're Custodes, but just being able to take like three two-man Terminator units and uh, a bunch of squads of Guardians that heroically intervene six is like pretty cool. Dealing with that many sad separate two up save infantry models in a world where like everybody has cover all the time is powerful so I, i'm expecting to see a lot of custodes 
And uh, with their access to fight first, Gaz into six Meganums fighting a death feels strong. Uh, especially since I think most people will not take MSU Custodes, they will default to the easier, more intuitive option, which is Big Bricks of 10, uh, which Gaz and his Meganop crew can easily pick up even with the minus one damage stratagem, I am not worried about them killing like close to 100% of that unit, uh, if not 100% with Unbridled Carnage, potentially. Uh, that is how our practice game went. I'd expect that's how other future practice games would go too. And with your Grot CP farm, being able to fight on death with two big bricks multiple times throughout the game is uh, really not that much of a stretch. In my game, I did it with Gaz into six Mega Knobs, and then on a subsequent turn, I was able to do it again with the Knobs and Warboss. Uh, both times was worth it. It's an insanely good stratagem, and I think both times I popped Unbridled Carnage on them too, which is very, very powerful. And their main job is just to be a distraction that takes care of key units that your opponent needs in order to play the mission well. No, not kill your army, but play the mission well. And once that's dealt with, you just use the rest of your army to score points and keep them from scoring and uh, hopefully just run away off the scoreboard. End up turn five, mostly tabled, but with so much of a points lead that even with a gambit, they're probably not going to be able to do anything about it. The gambits feel pretty skewy and like a lot of armies can't even like really do some of them. Like I don't know how knights are supposed to fit four units wholly within six of the center at the end of the game and then roll a four up for each of them. There's like, yeah, uh, gambits are kind of a trap. And I think uh, if your opponent is trying to gambit at the end, then you've succeeded in your goal and they will probably uh, regret uh, doing so. And so just play the mission. The whole uh, game revolves around you being really fast and being able to go to a bunch of different areas as the cards demand you to. This army also has, like, Stormblades are great because they can advance and charge in later turns of the game, which is good for killing stuff in the back lane, but it's also really good just for getting movement, like behind enemy lines. You've set them up in a, like, obscured midfield ruin and they're able to jump from there into the backfield and just charge things to get that that uh their their movements pretty far i mean it's a 12 inch plus advance and then a charge after if your opponent has backfield stuff that you don't think will kill them like just even like a rhino or whatever you can use that in order to score things like engage and behind easier if they don't have the movement to get there normally just look for uh units that your opponent has that won't kill you back but you can charge tag up and then score your points and then have them die the following turn at that point, they would have done their job, so it's fine. Trucks are great because they transport guys and protect them from indirect fire, but they also have a Strength 10 Wrecking Ball, which goes really well off the Tank Shock stratagem. If, and presuming your strength is higher than their toughness, it will go to 12 dice that you get to roll, and for every 5 up, you do a Mortal Wound. So uh, it's an average of 4 Pocket Mortals whenever you want, and it can spike to a max of 6, which will happen a lot of the time. And uh, yeah, multiple turns of trucks tank shocking will take down quite a few models. Uh, they were great for doing random wounds where I needed them. They're just awesome for like move blocking. I think they have OC3. It's more than one, whatever it is. So uh, maybe it's OC2. They, uh, they they helped me a few times when I was like at a break point. I needed to get like 11 models on an objective and I had nine. Uh, the, the truck was there to push me over that. And um, they're, they're like relatively annoying to kill. Like any real anti-vehicle thing will kill them, no problem. But they're like 10 wounds in T8, I believe. So four up save and then going, getting a six up invuln and uh, also having cover probably all the time, functionally having a three up save against shooting is uh, annoying for your opponent to deal with. So don't just see trucks as a means to get units into combat. Trucks are a great unit just for like playing the game, uh, being fast late game, and also doing things like just scoring, like engaged and moving around and being able to do the various secondaries that required and with the specific areas kind of fast. And if you have trucks positioned at multiple points throughout the board, you can probably make it so that any secondary you get that requires you to be somewhere, you'll be able to do that turn just because your army is everywhere and it's more than your opponent can deal with, and it's still like able to kill stuff if it really needs to, even though its main goal is just to like uh, score points, die, and fuck off. Well, you uh, have so big of a lead, they can't do anything about it. War bikes, same principle, right? They're fast, their guns are fine. Rapid Fire 5, Strength 5 AP 1, and Twin Linked is enough to still kill a lot of screens. There's like little five man units of whatever, and then uh, they can charge after too, so. That's the list. I, I tried like buggies and some other stuff. The buggies are uh, relatively mediocre. I don't think I'll be running them that much for a while, um, unfortunately, because I really, really love the buggies as models. Uh, I just don't think like mechanically they're where they need to be right now. Snop is way too expensive. That dream died on arrival. I think squig hogs are fine, but too expensive. Same with battle wagons. Uh, I know that you get like every warrior option included for free, even with like T12 uh, and a massive firing platform in their back. I don't know if 185 is quite right for them. 
I, I don't think they're bad. I think battle wagons are playable, but I would rather have like three trucks most of the time, just because trucks are better at playing the mission. Battle wagons are a uh, just big thing that your opponent can easily uh, oaf down uh, as a very attractive target for anti-tank vehicles, of which they're going to be a lot early on, because they're probably going to be in a anti-elite infantry and anti-big thing meta. Uh, like knights are going to be super good, and uh, that's why I feel like MSU Horde is great, because it's the opposite of that and everything about this list that i don't like that i think could be better is things that just skew more into like mass troops and msu and away from things like a block of six meganops of gas or an expensive storm ball unit but at 230 points with zag shrek um and 10 of them like uh yeah like that stuff is are things that i feel like i like running because i like having a big brick that kills stuff in combat but like objectively from a mechanical perspective might not be as good as just dialing even further into the we are here to play the mission and not fuck around if anything else plan so uh yeah those are my thoughts on this list i i, I want to try squig hogs more and some other stuff for the fun of experimentation but i i really I'm relatively confident that this archetype of just like spamming as much shit as possible and going full mission is going to be best of it works in a world where tactical missions exist as they currently do. This list is pretty good at handling all of the primaries that I remember right now. I don't remember seeing anything that stood out to me that much. There's one where you have to like kill more units than your opponent. But I think like you lose that basically no matter what you run with orcs against a lot of other matchups. I think that's like a relatively hard proposition for like whatever you would be running instead of this too. And uh, I would rather just like lose that game and win every other one. If I get that against like a really bad matchup, then struggle to win consistently in most other missions. I think like even if your opponent, I don't know if grind them down still exists right now, but if that is still a secondary selection, then this list doesn't give up anything else really to my knowledge that I can remember now. So they will have to struggle for a second one that you can try to outplay them at and keep them down unless they have a really tight plan to score. I, I see you probably getting more points than them. Yeah, and obviously it's like great at primary too, in addition to having a lot of secondary flexibility. Those are my thoughts on this list. I hope they help if you want to play Warhammer 10th edition. And uh, we're back. This is me from the slight future, like two hours into the future from when I recorded that. Uh, here to tell you that I decided to split up this video and the one that I was supposed to be conjoined with into separate ones because I think they're thematically different enough to justify that. If you want to hear me complain about 10th now, uh, there is a link to that video. Video or will be in the description below this one. If you like this video, I'm going to have a lot more 10th edition coverage as the edition escalates. I think like starting with this, I want to just do a lot more like game based coverage in addition to the hobby videos and like music and other Warhammer adjacent stuff. So uh, yeah, uh, like and subscribe if you're new and you liked it. Uh, there will be a lot more. If not, that's fine too. Thanks for coming by and uh, see you soon. Goodbye. <laughs>